All right, in this video, I'm going to go through some quick uh, TI tips. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use the list editor to enter data in your calculator, how to find some basic summary statistics like the mean and the standard deviation, and uh, lastly, how to make histograms and box plots on your TI graphing calculator. So uh, to get started here, we're going to need some data. So as I get my data set, I'm going to make sure you get your calculator out and follow along so you understand how to use the different functionality. So the data set that we're going to use throughout here is a sample of animal speeds in miles per hour. And there's seven animals whose picture I knew how to draw. Um, and we're going to, I'll show you first how to enter those into your calculator. So this is very simple to do. Just take your calculator, turn it on. And then you're going to start by pressing the stat key, which is like right in the middle of things here. And when you press the stat key, you have a screen that looks like this. And your first option is to edit. And that by pressing enter in the bottom right corner of your calculator, that'll enter the list editor. And when you come into the list editor, there may or may not be data in there already. Uh, looks like I might have last year's final exam score is still in there. So we want to clear that out. And uh, the way you clear a list is just press the up arrow to get to the top of the list. Um, like you can see L1's highlighted there. And we want to hit clear and enter. You don't want to hit delete to um, clear a list. If you hit delete to clear a list, it actually deletes the entire list. And if you do that too many times, you won't have any lists and you'll have to go buy a new calculator. So now we want to enter the data. So to enter the squirrel here, I just type 12 on the keypad and hit enter. And then I enter the snake. It kind of freaks me out that the snake can go that fast. Uh, and then the pig, and right on down the line. It's good to make sure you keep track uh, one by one. If you happen to enter something incorrectly, like you maybe you do three tenths instead of three hundredths for that snail, um, you can backtrack um, and you can type over. You can overwrite. Um, you can also hit the delete key on a specific item. Don't want to delete an entire list, but you can delete a specific item if you need to delete it and, and start over. You can also use the insert key above the delete. And lastly, I'll enter the elephant. And you'll notice as I'm entering the elephant that it tells me right down in the corner here that this is the seventh element in my list. And since there were seven animals, then I know I didn't uh, miss any, or at least it makes me think I didn't miss anything. And that's basically how you uh, enter the data into the list. Um, one more thing that I'll show you, or two, a couple more things before uh, we get on to finding summary stats. Um, what you can do here in the list editor as well is these speeds were in miles per hour. If you wanted to create a new list where the speeds were, say, in like meters per second and you knew a conversion, you wouldn't have to convert them one by one. You can just move over to L2 here and up at the top uh, shelf there on L2, you can type a formula. And the formula, uh, I, th I think the conversion from uh, miles per hour to, to feet per second is like 45 hundredths or something like that. So I can put 0 0.45 times. And if I could just reference L1, then I can finish this formula here. And the way you reference a list is you need to enter the list menu. And we started this whole thing by pressing the stat key. Right above the stat key, you see in blue there, you see the word list. That's the list menu. So if I press second stat, it brings me into the list menu and I can select any list that I want. So if I select L1, then the formula that I've typed in here is 45 hundredths times the speeds in miles per hour. And if I do that at the top here and hit enter, you can see it just quickly fills the list with um, their speeds in feet per second. So um, you can see how fast the elephant is going in feet per second, if that's an easier thing to wrap your brain around. Um, one more thing about uh, the list menu. I'm going to quit out of here by pressing second, quit. Um, if you look again at that list menu by pressing second, stat, there's also a column that says operations. And you can sort a list ascending or descending. It's pretty helpful if you're trying to find a particular element in the list. And there's some other commands there as well. And then there's also a math menu where you can do a lot of, um, a lot of individual statistics on that list. So to summarize, to enter data into your list, all you have to do is press the stat key, and then hit enter under where it says edit, and then basically just start typing. That's all you have to do. Uh, 
clear any lists that are there and start typing. The next thing I'll show you how to do is find some summary statistics if you want to know the average animal speed but you don't feel like adding up all that data. You could do it from the list menu here but there's a shortcut. I can second quit. I'm going to start by pressing the stat key again. Instead of hitting en enter on edit, I'm going to move over once to the calc menu and I see this option of one variable stats. This gives you summary statistics, basically all the statistics you're going to need at the beginning of the course um, for this data set. So I hit enter for one var stats. Uh, if you have an older version of the calculator, you won't see this screen. You'll just see the word one var stats. And then what we need to do is we need to reference the list that we want to find the statistics for. Of course, it's L1 unless we wanted to do the one in feet per second. Um, and if you have the older version, you can just go into the list menu and select L1. Frequency list, list can be left blank because we only have one squirrel and one snake and so forth. Just go down and hit calculate. Uh, you see what it tells you. It tells you the average speed. That's what we get if we add them all up and divide by seven. It tells us the sum. That might be helpful in certain problems. Uh, and what's important is the fourth one down, this is the standard deviation. S sub X is the standard deviation of our data set, 11.7 or so. Um, that's the standard deviation of a sample. And this is just a sample of seven animals. Um, so that's what we'd use if we're, we're asked about the standard deviation. Uh, right below that, that is also a standard deviation, but it's the population standard deviation. So unless you painstakingly entered every uh, animal speed in the world or every item in the population into your calculator, you're going to shy away from using sigma down there, the 10.8 number. Uh, and then, of course, is the sample size, and you see this little arrow. It means you can scroll down some more. And when you scroll down, you'll see the five-number summary which is the minimum, the maximum, the quartiles, the first quartile and the third quartile, and of course the median there. So you basically with that one var stats command, you can get all the statistics you'll really need. Summarize how to find summary stats. Uh, you also press the stat key, but now you arrow over to the calc menu and you select one var stats. Make sure you just know which statistic is which. Okay, next thing, how do you make a box plot? So we certainly could just take these values that we got here and make a box plot, but uh, that's kind of a pain to do by hand and it's nice to see it on the calculator and maybe compare different box plots. Um, so the way that you do this is, um, you know how graphing in, in your other classes you'd press this Y equals key. We won't use this for stat. It is important to check that you don't have any functions in the y equals menu. Sometimes there's some hiding down here because they can interfere with the stat plot. Um, but what we do instead of pressing y equals, we press second y equals. And second y equals takes us to the stat plot menu. Um, you see you have three plots that you can use. You usually use them one at a time. I'll hit enter on plot one. Mine's already turned on, um, but you can toggle back and forth between on and off. Um, if you're not using it, you want it turned off. Um, because that can interfere with other functionality on the calculator. Uh, and then if you hit down, you can select from six different types of graphs. The one in the bottom left corner here is called a modified box plot, and right next to it is an unmodified box plot. The difference is whether or not we want outliers to show as outliers. Uh, and in, in AP Statistics, we almost always use the modified box plot, the one in the bottom left corner with the outliers shown. When you select that, you have this option of picking some different marks for those outliers. I usually use the square, but you can use whatever you like. Um, the X list, the data set needs to be referenced again. So if you put your data in L2 or L3, you need to change that there using the list menu. Uh, after all that's done, all you need to do to see the picture is press zoom 9. Zoom, and I'll show you here. Number nine is zoom stat. So you can either hit the number nine or you can scroll all the way down and hit enter. And it just makes the box plot for you. If you need to know some details about the box plot, looking at it's not enough, you can press the trace key along the top here. And I can see the minimum down in the lower corner and the cursor's highlighting the, the minimum. I can hit over and then it shows me that same five number summary that I got from one bar stats. Okay. So to summarize how to make a box plot, um, you press second stat plot, which is above y equals. Um, you set it up so it looks like this one with the outliers shown. And then you press zoom 
um, and you can trace. Okay. Um, to make a histogram, it's it isn't more complicated to make a histogram, but um, histograms in general are usually for bigger data sets. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a couple more uh, creatures to our list. Um, let me see. Maybe I will add. I don't know what I can draw a picture of. Here's a human. You can see I can't draw people as well as I draw animals, and that human is going at. Uh, 28 miles per hour. I'm going to add uh, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I guess that's a spider. Uh, and he can move at 2 miles per hour. And um, let's try a challenge here. How about, uh, let's see, I can draw a picture of an ostrich. Probably not. There's my ostrich. It might look like a chicken, um, but it's going, it's running at 30 miles per hour. So unless chickens can run that fast, that's an ostrich. Um, and I'll add them to my data set. So stat, edit, and scrolling down to L1, I'll add 28 miles per hour. I'll add 2 miles per hour, and I'll add 30 miles per hour. Let's wait for the right numbers. You'll notice it doesn't automatically calculate the, the feet per second. So you'd have to redo that formula if you wanted to reference that list again. And then I'll quit out of the stat menu, and I'll go back into the stat plot, and I'll hit enter. Notice I left it turned on. Generally, you want to turn it off if you're not using it. Um, and under type, I'm just going to choose the histogram instead. Now, what a histogram does is it takes your data set and it chunks it into bins uh, of similar speeds in this case. Um, the bins that it chooses, um, if you just press zoom 9 at this point, could be pretty arbitrary. They could be bins that are like 4.3 miles per hour wide. So I usually won't press zoom 9, even though that will often show you a decent picture. Um, if you do, sometimes it's hard to copy down what that picture looks like because the, the scale was so arbitrary. So instead of pressing zoom 9, I'll press the window key here. And once I press window, I'm going to start thinking about what the best way to organize this data is. So I had speeds ranging um, from very slow, the snail, zero, almost zero miles per hour, to uh, the rabbit, which was 35. So you want to go a little bit below the snail and a little bit above the rabbit on the x scale. So I said zero to 40. Makes sense here. These are speeds in miles per hour. We always want to label things. Um, and then we want to decide how to break up that scale. So you might try five miles per hour at a time. You might try 10. You might try something in between. Um, but when you do, what happens is that's going to affect the Ys. The Ys are the frequency. It's how many animals will fit into those uh, little bins that you created. Um, like I had between zero and five miles per hour, I think I had two animals, the, the snail and the spider. Um, but between 25 and 30, I might have had a whole bunch more. So. Uh, the Y max, you're not quite sure what the, the largest number in any bin might be, so sometimes it's a little guess and check. Might it go up to 10? Might it only go up to 5? I'm going to start with 5 and see what it looks like. So I press graph, and this is the picture that it shows me. Now, when you're trying to make a histogram, you got some options with this bin width. The one I chose there was 5. What you're trying to get is a picture that is detailed but not too detailed because we don't really want to just see every single um, every single animal in its own little bin. We want to clump some together. So generally you want to see between 5 and 20 bars and then that's an acceptable histogram. So this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and an empty. So around, you know, around 7, 8 bins, 7 bars. Um, I'm just going to take a quick look at uh, what a uh, scale of something a little larger might look like, like maybe 8, because that's also divisible by 40. If I hit graph, so now I still see 5 bars, so that's still acceptable. Um, and it's probably a little easier to draw. As long as you're between 5 and 20 bars, that's an acceptable histogram. So now how do I draw this? So it's, the scale's going up by 8, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. So I got my scale labeled on there. The frequency on the y-axis, you can see with little tick marks here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
right? And then what I see is if I hit the trace key, in the very first bin, there's two elements. So let's go over here at two, first bin. If I hit over in my next bin, there's three. It means there's three animals between eight and 16 miles per hour. And sometimes you forget about whether it includes the 16 or not. And you can see it's strictly less than. Hit over one more time. There's one animal between 16 and 24. There's three animals in between 24 and 32. And then there's uh, just the rabbit here in the last bin. Okay, and that's how you make a histogram on your calculator. You do it in a nice way that you can copy it down on a, a test or a quiz or a homework assignment so uh, you, can, you can show your work. Um, so to summarize how to make the histogram, basically there's a little bit of thought that needs to go in with the window. Um, but just so you know, if you hit the Zoom 9 key, it'll do it automatically. It just might not show a very reasonable scale along the bottom, like this one scaled by... Uh, I don't know, about 8.4 or something like that. It's kind of awkward. So you, you go into your window, you think about the minimum, the slowest animal, you think about the maximum, the fastest animal, and then you try a few different scales in between to see a, a pretty picture. Okay, so hopefully that helps you with uh, some of the basic problems that you'll see at the beginning of statistics, how to put data into your list, how to find summary statistics like the mean or the five-number summary, and then how to make the histograms and the box plots.